Have you spoken to any of the families of his victims? We've spoken to several, but there was only one that we've become very close friends with, the sister of one of the victims. And to this day, we remain good friends with her. If those families are watching this now on television, is there anything you want to say to them, either from you or on Jeff's behalf? Well, I'm extremely, very, very sorry that it happened to their loved ones. And if I could have done anything to prevent it, I would have. And I ask, would ask them to forgive Jeff for what he did. Uh, he's paid the price, I believe, now. That doesn't lessen their hurt, but uh, ask their forgiveness. Like, like Teresa said to me, Lionel, I forgive. When he was murdered, Teresa said to me, Lionel, I forgive Jeff. Do you forgive him? Yeah, I forgive him now. I mean, um, it's really horrible to think of, to try to keep thinking of all the things he did. But uh, even though he did all these horrible things, we forgive St. Paul for all the people that he killed in the name of God, in the name of Judaism. He, he was forgiven completely. And so if God can forgive, which is demonstrated in the scriptures, if, if God can certainly forgive St. Paul, I, the teaching is, of course, that anyone can be forgiven. Joel's reaction to that? For me, that's a very hard uh, way to answer that. Forgiveness to me has different levels. Um, stuff that <clears throat> he did <clears throat> consume me that probably fueled my, uh, my alcohol and my drug use. But that said, forgiveness is not for so much the individuals for myself. So to answer your question, no, I don't forgive him, but I don't hate him, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I hate what he did, but it doesn't consume my life anymore because I was basically, you know, locked in that. I, it's hard to explain. Maybe you could help me. Uh, Dr. Phil, if you know what I'm saying, I don't forgive him, but I, you know, because the hatred, if I still hated him, I'm hurting myself. It's like fire is a good tool, but it, it, if it's unchecked, it burns out of control. So I would have burned myself out. Billy, what do, what do you say? That makes sense. I'm going to say no. And I'm going to say because it keeps going, a generation's what, 20, 30 years, lost a son lost a wife. My family goes through hell all the time. And it, it, you know, when I was in therapy before my doctor passed away in 2008, you know, part of the therapy was to be able to get rid of these conflicts, you know, with the anger, the uh, being able to forgive, you know, and stuff like that. But I, I'm not so sure I can forgive him. Do you blame these parents for missing all these red flags? I blame the father. I can't forgive. Do you blame them for missing the red flags? Yes. Yes, I, I do. I blame him for a whole lot of things. I, I'm sorry, you know. I, I, I can't help it. I mean... It's okay. My son, I love my son, I love my wife, I love my mama, I love my family, and he threw a wrench in it. And his daddy, and I feel like that he knew something was wrong with Jeff. And he um, tried to put him in the military even to get rid of that problem. Right. And it's a domino effect, and I'm... Yeah. And if I haven't said so, so far, I do want to say I'm so sorry about your son. Really, now look at me, I'm not, I'm not saying that casually. I'm really sorry yes. about your son. Lionel and stepmother Sherry told me they were filled with guilt and shame about missing those red flags. 
Take a look. Do you think, in retrospect, that there were red flags, there were warning signs that you missed? There definitely were warning signs that I missed, but I didn't believe it or it's hard to believe. It really is. I'll give you one example. When he was about somewhere in the 11, 12 to 14 age range, he roamed around the country roads where we lived and gathered on his bike with big plastic bags the remains of various animals, foxes, you know, do uh, small dogs, uh, animals that had been killed on the road and took them back home. And ours was extremely heavily wooded lot, a very rough terrain where he did, as I found out later at the time of his so-called insanity trial, found out for the first time there that he did this, and he kept these animals and felt them, uh, explored them, their insides, their entrails, and uh, terrible things like that. Although <laughs> I've had friends who have told me they've done the same sort of thing, but that would have been a red flag. Dr. Phil, that's a bunch of bull. Okay, he knew. He chose to look the other way. There's an old saying, you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And then he tries to dismiss it. He go, he, 90% of what he just said was all these horrible things he was unaware of Jeffrey was doing. And then he wipes it away by saying, but then my friend said they did it too. Right. Well, okay, kids are fascinated. They, you know, see a dead animal. Who, oh, what is that? And you, you know, but you don't play with it and you don't bring it home. This shows Jeff at a very, very early age. He had such a, a sweet disposition, sweet baby breath, and he was always happy. Christmas time was always a, a, a very happy time. It was a time when there were no real arguments. Jeff was always happy at Christmas time because there was a lot of things to eat. Easter was always important to him because he got his chocolate bunny. Thanksgiving was always spent with my family and there was always a lot of love and attention given to Jeff. Jeff would always run towards me and jump in my arms. I would uh, frequently carry Jeff on my shoulders or ride around on the handlebars of my bicycle. At this point, he's less than seven years old, and he didn't go into his period of shyness until that point. Jeff, Dave, and his mother were happy, and I was happy that Jeff liked him and accepted him. They were seven years apart, so I wouldn't say that they were extremely close in interests, but they did things together. Jeff really loved Frisky. He just loved the way Frisky paid attention to him and licked him and romped around with him. Jeff always had an interest in nature. He was very inquisitive. He liked uh, biology class and in school, and we did several things together for science fair. And this is at Grandma Dahmer's house. He loved his grandmother dearly. Yeah. He knew it was unconditional love. Yeah. Grandma never judged anything. He was just loved packed his lunch when he went to work, when she was, he was staying with her in Milwaukee, uh, made dinner for him, uh, was always concerned about everything he did. Jeff did a lot of riding on his bike in the rural roads. That's the bicycle that we learned that he had used with big plastic bags to travel around the rural roads to pick up roadkill. He was 12 to 14 years old. The happy little boy. And yet this was when he was 12 years old. So it was sort of at the beginning of this 
this strange association between roadkill and, and his sexual urges. Things were forming in his mind that you can't see just by looking at a picture. He just He looks like a, a happy youth there. Anybody besides me bothered by that tape? <laughs> Anybody? You know, first off, I, I'm bothered just by the way he's handling that dog. Yeah. And then large plastic bags driving around picking up roadkill. What the hell are you doing picking up roadkill? What? Are you, that's not something that's your average afternoon on your bike, picking up roadkill and bringing it home. And what are you going to do when you bring it home? And he said, well, he's just a happy little boy. That's not a happy little boy's normal activity, right? Is it? No, it's Does not. that ring right to no. anybody? No. And there is something no. I'd like to address, too. His father said his so-called insanity trial. Mm. Jeffrey Dahmer, insanity is, is a legal term. It's not a clinical term. And it means the person did not know the difference between right from wrong at the time they committed the behavior that they're being charged with a crime. Um, and Jeffrey Dahmer, not insane. He knew what he was doing with was wrong, and he chose to do it. His prima facie behavior of trying to cover up and hide his crimes indicated that he knew they were wrong, or he wouldn't have been trying to cover them up and hide them. Exactly. You don't try to hide something unless you know it's wrong. They're always looking. They're always hunting, and their victims are nothing more than a prop in a fantasy, their fantasy that they want to play out, and you're there to help them do that, but you don't know it. So don't let your guard down. Don't ever go away with someone. Someone as uh, one of the, <clears throat> uh, I think you mentioned Rita, that um, he said uh, to your your younger brother, would you like to earn some money? Well, yes, I would. Well, you have to come to my house. No. Mm -hmm. What he was trying to do was get your little brother from an area where he might mm -hmm. be seen to a private area where he could hurt him. Right. So teach your mm -hmm. kids and yourself, don't ever go with someone who's trying to get you to go somewhere with them into their house, or let me walk you out to your car. This is a bad neighborhood. Yeah, because you're in it. You know? <laughs> Don't let your guard down. You need to think about it every time you decide to get mouthy, or every time you decide to shove somebody, or every time you decide to swipe right and go meet somebody uh, in a place where you don't have protection and you don't have cover, because they're out there. And they're not going to identify themselves. Yeah, you know, I've talked about evil, uh, which is really certainly not a diagnosis. It's more descriptive. I I've seen it more than once. And I want you to consider whether you use that term or some other concept to know that there are bad people in this world. We've been talking about one today, but I want you to have that concept in your mind because how bad people get leverage on good people is a whole concept you need to consider. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. Most commonly called revenge porn. Private images. Caitlin found out that videos of her, one, she says she had no idea was being taken, had been posted without her consent on a porn site. I'm on over 45 websites, five other countries. It's ruined my entire life. Your own mom called and asked if you were doing porn. That was the lowest point for me. Not only was I going to take the site down, I wanted to destroy this guy's life. That's tomorrow. Check your local listings. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.